Welcome to the electric heater. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Good. You can hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I can. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Sean. So uh, I'm just going to jump right in. This is a, it's a cool day for me because my whole philosophy of the electric theater was to be able to have conversations with people I've never met. And then hopefully those conversations leak over into reality with other human beings. And somehow I find my way back into a wormhole of a conversation from before. So it's, just so everyone knows, it's pretty cool because I was doing a podcast. I can't remember with who, but it's pretty recent. And I brought you guys up. And then the next thing I know, here we are. So awesome. That, that's my, uh, that's sort of my favorite way um, about music to uh, let it find me. And I think that's the story everyone sort of needs to know is that um, I, I had a dear friend many, many years ago who turned me on to shuffle, mm -hmm. uh, shuffle mode. And I had asked him if he had heard an album that I did. And he said, no, I'm waiting for it to show up on shuffle. And I was like, what is that? You know, what, what's going on with that? And he explained to me that he had over 10,000 songs. And when he's in the subway, he likes things to hit him and it kind of decides his day because he, he feels like I do with music. So that's kind of what I do. Um, but I also apply that to like, you know, all the musical sites. I'll, I'll, I'll be checking something out I like, and then the algorithms sort of say others like this or whatever. But I, I kind of let things just play while I'm working. And you guys, uh, you guys came to me one day. And I think the coolest thing about it was that I just thought it was so in the moment in the day and i'm like wow you know i thought whatever day it was about five years ago probably and i was like what is this and i listened to it probably for a year straight wow. uh, at, at different times and uh you know there's many things we can talk about it but um i'm just trying to give the backstory to everyone yeah, because uh, it's a little different than just like me talking to somebody in a band like this is really over something I fell in love with and knew nothing about. So how it carries on from there is that I don't normally educate myself. I don't go down the wormhole of today and use all the the Internet's ability to educate myself. I, I, I sort of want the true vision in my own brain. I want to imagine. Uh, uh, I want to imagine what this is all about. Um, so that's really that's really what it is, you guys. And then what happened was I I, I wanted to see an album cover uh, because I love album covers. Since I was a little kid, I, I can remember just holding on to you know twelve inches and yeah. just staring at like blackout from the Scorpions or something, and just trying to trying to understand why that would be the vision of the band. So for me, we don't have to have, you don't have to ever explain anything and give it away if you, if you prefer. But for me, when I finally got the album cover and then it said 2006, I was like, what? I, mean, <laughs> I, uh -huh. I, I, I literally was like, where have I been? What do I do? What is my problem? But, <laughs> You know, and I had I had a good chuckle with that because yeah, I was playing it with a good friend and he's like, Oh yeah, I know that band. And he's like, You listen to that band? I was like, uh, you know, I was talking about all this stuff and, and then I was like, 2006, it it just blew me away. And that made it even better for me, uh, because I knew that I was succeeding in what I like most, which is not to buy in to sort of the forced reality around me you know i i want yeah. it to be there when i absolutely need it and that's why i was able to listen to it for a straight year because it was a mindset and songs like you know my two favorite songs and then i'll shut up but my two the songs oh, that just kept it. it going i think the first song i heard was uh 
won't come back alive. Awesome. And I, I, sometimes I miss up titles and stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do the best I can. <clears throat> and then that just took me. So I listened to that probably 30 times. And then I went to the beginning of the album and I fell in love with that. And then I went to the end of the album and listened to Relief. And that was it. Um, cause th that sort of movement in that song is something like that. I love that sort of, I don't know if it's a pull off or just whatever it is, that sort of swagger of falling in and out is like what I love most. So that's the one that hooked me in. And as a kid, I usually needed about two to three songs from an album to buy it because mm -hmm. money was scarce. Yeah. And, um, I needed to have at least a couple albums a week to continue my interest so if there was at least two songs, I would buy the album, you know, but anyway, then I went to the album cover and then I really will shut up, but no, uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, awesome. the album cover was, uh, to me, um, and you know, I'm not trying to tell anybody what it is or whatever, but to me, I thought, oh man you know, look at this color. And then these are all doses, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in, in my brain, in my brain, they're doses. And that made me love it even more. And I thought, wow, you know, it's like, you know, when people go listen to the album, if they haven't, and hopefully we, we move people towards that. But, uh, uh, there's a lot of dynamics in your music that, you know, from, I'm not sure if it's a drum machine or a drummer made to sound like a drum machine or whatever, but that was one thing that got me right away. I was like, whoa, I love that. I love incorporating all things. So anyway, there's a lot of dynamics in your music and you guys take a lot of time to um, really go in and finitely <laughs> uh, look at parts and make them sound different ways from vocals being way over here, up. Mm -hmm. top and uh so anyway that's my introduction with you guys and again i know i don't know a single thing about any of you guys or yourself yeah. or the band because i just try to keep it religion you know and anyway so thank you for the great music and that that heart and uh um you know actually after i said it on the podcast i went back and listened to it again without even knowing we were going to talk. And um, yeah. I was like, oh, I haven't listened to that for a minute, you know? So anyway, so wh where are you guys, where are you guys from? What's your story? I know you got something new coming out or is out in sure. 2021. So what's, what's the, what's the time lapse between 2000s? And I know there's a little like EP before that. I checked that out too. Yeah. Uh, the burning mouth or uh, the. Dead um, mouth. Yeah. So yes. So yeah, so I'll, tell, tell us the story. Tell us the story. Yeah, for sure. So, well, I'm happy to tell the story. And before I do, I just want to say thanks for the, uh, it's just really cool hearing your reaction to it and hearing, you know, especially that you came into it in the most organic way possible, you know, no expectations, no knowledge about what it was, when it was from, who made it, the music just hit you. And that's, um, that means a lot because that's, uh, you know, what better way to come across something and uh and cool too that you came across that you said five years ago kind of which for us was in the middle of a very long hiatus i mean we went um we went over a dozen years between releasing albums and around the time that you would have heard that say five years ago that was around the time when i would have been surprised to know that anyone really that anyone still uh, knew who we were or was listening to our music at all so uh, I think that's very cool. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as who we are and our story, I mean, uh, we started the band, uh, it's gone through a lot of changes recently, but Genghis Tron started when I was 19 years old. Uh, I grew up in uh, mostly in the South in Georgia and a little bit in Tennessee and Florida. But then when I was 18, I moved to upstate New York uh, to go to college. And when I was 19 years old, I started, I started the band with my friend, Michael, and uh, another guy who was our vocalist named Mookie. And it was just the three of us. And when Genghis Tron started, I mean, actually, it, I mean, I think it started as a conversation. We were, you know, at a party or hanging out or something. And I was so, you know, I was so enthralled to have met these guys because uh, where I grew up, I didn't really know many people who liked the kind of music that I did. And um, 
and you know, I graduated from high school in 2001, 2002. I'm born in 84. I'm 37 now. So I grew up in that era that, you know, I'm just old enough to have, to have first had to go to, you know, record stores and, <coughs> and wait, you know, until the day of an album release for me to go in and buy it right when the store opens. You know, I had that experience, but I also had some of the experience of being, being young enough to start getting some of my music through the internet while I was still well, I was still coming of age. So, you know, when I'm 16, 17, 18, I'm finding about all these bands on the internet. I don't know anyone who knows them. Um, anyhow, long story short, I'm here I am in college and I meet this guy, Michael. And he's the first person I, I ever met who on one hand likes, you know, crazy death metal and grindcore stuff. And on the other hand, loves, you know, Aphex Twin and, and Square Pusher, Warp Records. Yeah, music, Square Pusher. Canada and, uh, you know, ministry skinny puppy and and all the stuff in between depeche mode all the things that i loved and uh the band started as a very simple concept it was just hey what if we wrote these songs that kind of combined all of our influences in a very obvious way you know it was very obvious and kind of heavy-handed at first because we were kids and we we're like let's just have a crazy uh, screaming part followed by a really mellow you know ambient keyboard part and that was uh we started making demos like that when we were, yeah, when we were 19 or 20 in 2004. And uh, we put out our, so, you know, we had no, we had ambitions to make music, but we never thought, we thought maybe we'll play a show. Maybe we'll be able to record a demo. Uh, you know, it, our sort of dreams at that point started and ended with just writing the songs. We had no idea that we'd be able to do anything with it. Uh, but then we, we ended up getting signed to a little label that put out an EP. Uh, and that was actually the first EP was called Cloak of Love in 2005. And then yeah. 2006, we had our first album called Dead Mountain, <clears throat> Dead Mountain Mouth. And then yep. board, up, board Up the House, the one that sounds like you're most familiar with, was 2007 or 2008 on Relapse Records. And I'm, I'm giving you the, the backstory because it was just three of us guys. Uh, oh, and by the way, the, you, you mentioned drums. Yeah, at the time, we didn't know any drummers. Um, and so we just, you know, and we wanted to have not only sort of crazy drum parts, but also purposefully synthetic sounding drums as well. You know, synthetic percussion to say at the time was really inspired by our love for the Warp Records and 90s kind of electronic music um, layered on top of or, or sort of weaving in and out of the more acoustic live sounding drums. Uh, but so we would be programmed them. I programmed the, for lack of a better term, like the fake live drums in my, uh, partner Michael songwriting partner he would do the more the more electronic sounding stuff so you know I would do guitar and drum programming he'd do synths and drum programming and then the third guy Mookie did vocals and some synths as well so it was just us sitting in little dorm rooms or apartments you know grinding out songs doing dozens and dozens of drafts taking months to write a song overthinking every single part uh, that's how it started and that's still how we do it um, but we just love you know, we just love the attention to detail and to to putting everything together. Yeah. Well, did, that, did, did that album, so you took time to write it, you mm -hmm. spent time recording it, but did the, did the final thing, was it done somewhere all at once or was it you guys putting it together over time and then making one thing? Did it go to a mixer? Did you guys mix it? Did it go yeah. to a master? Yeah, we, we ended up recording. Um, so all of our, everything we've released has was eventually recorded and mixed in the studio. And uh, for the first EP, it was with this guy, uh, Colin Marston, who's now has, has got quite a name for himself. On the, he plays in a lot of uh, New York based metal bands. And the biggest band he's in now is, uh, he's in Gorguts, the, the famous old death metal band. He's a new member in that band now. Uh, but our, our three full lengths out, the three full lengths, the one from 06, 08, and the new one that just came out, those were all recorded in Salem, Massachusetts at God City Studio with our friend Kurt Ballou. He's in the band uh, Converge, and he's played, yeah. um, he's recorded other, like High on Fire and some other bands you, you probably are, have heard yeah. of and maybe have played with, but uh, he's fantastic. So yeah, so it, it, you know, a lot of the we would put together the arrangements ourselves, but the, as far as the, the guitars and vocals would always be recorded in the studio. Um, 
And uh, I'm, I'll get in, I can get into this later. We actually do finally have a drummer now for our new album um, and he's incredible, but uh, that's sort of a, I, I'll get into that, but sort of the history of the band was, was just the three of us, uh, the three of us friends just making this, making this music ourselves. And, uh, you know, we, we lived in New York for a while while we were in school, then we were in Philly, uh, did, and did the band thing, the touring thing full time for about four years, I think, three or four years. And then around 2009, 2010, um, you know, it got to this point for us where we felt like we had to take a break. Uh, and there are plenty of reasons for it that I can get into, but the main, the main reason for purposes to sort of explain in the backstory of our band, the main reason we wanted to take a break was I think, cause we, you know, we felt that the, the, the constant, the tour cycle, especially for a band of our size, which was, you know, we would play our biggest show if we're headlining to 150 or 200 people and clubs and you know in major cities and it blew our minds we never knew that anyone would want to come <laughs> come see our music so it, we've always been sort of out, outpacing our own expectations but at the same time it wasn't shaping up to be you know to be some huge career for us or anything like that and, and we knew that the only way to survive would be to keep up that grind and to tour you know seven or eight or nine months a year and it was starting to wear on us a bit we said, you know, let's take a break because let's let's keep this our passion and let's not let's not ruin our relationship with each other. Let's let's not spoil this amazing creative love that we have for this music that we make. So we planned on taking a six month break. Then it turned into a year long break, and then you know, twelve years later, we finally uh, reconvened and, and put out another album. The whole time, we, it was always our plan to do it. We just had no idea it was going to take so long. And you know, life get life gets in the way. Um, and it was hard going without it for so long. I mean, for me personally, just being away from making music uh, felt like I was, you know, lost a part of my soul or something. But uh, but uh, it feels so good to be back doing it now. So. Uh, that's that's well, the short that's the short story. But now we're all spread out. I'm, we've um, I live in the Detroit area. Uh, my the other songwriter Michael lives in uh, lives in New York, and uh, now we actually have a new a new vocalist who lives here in Detroit as well. And our drummer's in Vancouver. Uh, so we're all spread out. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so the new album I see uh, was um, it's two twenty one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah uh so 2021 new album when did it come out it came out at the end of march yeah march so, so relatively just a couple of weeks yeah, ago, just, really just a couple of weeks ago so <clears throat> and so so there's that so so let's go back to that album so that's yeah. one thing that one thing that i loved about that i was telling you with the drums is that i i on my own, I've always loved drum machines. I play drums and I always love the ability. And, you know, there's something special about like the drums you're using because, you know, in, in order, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, it's not right or wrong. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, different, whatever. Uh, it, you know, demos can go to albums because things change and, um, uh, you know, those drums don't, you know, you know, in the back of your head, they're sort of a drum machine, but they got a flavor, you know, then thrown mm -hmm. through some preamps or, so that's one thing I knew. I was like, okay, this is a, you know, I felt like it was a drum machine, but I'm like, but it, you know, it's in a studio and that yeah. makes it, you know, but that makes it great. You know, it's like uh, committing to some um, different philosophies. And then, you know, most people, I don't know if they really think about going in, renting a studio or a room and going in and working with a producer or an engineer and literally like working hard on making a drum machine sound like another paintbrush. So that, that really turned me on with those sorts because never, I don't feel like it ever sounds the same. You know, you get to, uh, what is it, uh, um, Beast, I think. Uh, yeah, by, the Beast, yep. By, mm -hmm. the by the time you get there, you know, it's just, this other whole thing happening and you know you're yeah. like what what really is happening i'm like that's that's really fast <laughs> and really yeah. you know so but it sounds so good but in the back of your mind you know but it sounds so good your imagination can roll 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I really, I really love all the dynamics you guys have on that album. I really, I really, you know, you know, people are going to be mad at me. Don't take this the weird way, but you know, it's like, I, I don't normally <clears throat> ever just, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I don't normally even talk on the phone, let alone mm -hmm. <clears throat> talk to people, you know, like this. So it's like brand new in my life. You know, it's, I'm trying to do different things, but yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't feel like I'm going on a limb. I really think that album is pretty genius. You know, I really, Thank you, man. I think, I, I really think, well, I don't think I, I know it is. And, you know, I don't, I really, it's a great album, and, you know, and the music, everything's so, uh, Oh, everything's so um, oversaturated. And for me, you know, I've been going through this new thing lately with uh, like, um, you know, I'll write demos and we'll use, uh, we'll use, I don't know the program because I just don't, I don't, my brain doesn't subscribe to needing to know facts like names and stuff. I just go with it. So we're using some, I hear you. <clears throat> we're using some programs and they're real drummers. Uh, playing the parts so it's not like you know zeros and ones in a sequencer that we're all you know doing and it's got that sound these are real cats performing and then you know the pro tool world doing its thing quant night whatever they do yeah, to yeah. Make it loopable but what i found was i was like wow i can hear that human even though it's been snapped to a grid or quantized or elastic yeah. whatever, whatever all that stuff is I still can hear the human pushing those beats, you know, the energy I, you know, I'm convinced I can. And it's crazy because you almost can't pull it out. Sometimes you're like, what's wrong with what's wrong. Like, it's interesting because I would always want to jam with a drummer. I'm a drummer, but right. I, I'm also down the wormhole and I want, to break away from what is taught. So why, why can't we use a drum machine? Especially if human beings are being paid to play parts and people are paying money to record those parts and then they clean them all up and actually put them on a CD or a program that you buy on the internet to use in Pro Tools. I mean, why not use it um, as long as it's, you know, as long as it feels good. So I, I love all that stuff and again, you guys would uh, do some really cool stuff with the vocals. Um, mm. You know, most albums are so linear these days. You know, uh, I always tell people, it's like, I'm in a studio recording Slipknot stuff, you know, at 96, 32 or 96, 60, whatever their, whatever the float is or the bit yeah. rate, <clears throat> the 96 for sure. And I grew up on tape. We, we did our first two albums to tape. And you know, razor blades and fills taped mm -hmm. all across the wall, and like just complete insanity. But what a great education! And then it kind of helped you understand the digital world even more because you learned the hard way. But um, again, I, I just love the fact that like you take the chances with the vocals and the guitar, and then uh, most, like I was saying, most bands seem to be so linear and won't explore the space. And in this digital world, you know, I, like I was saying, I, I, we, we record at such a high resolution in my mind, and then we hand it over to everybody and they won't even tell us what the codec is or, or what, you know, they're just like, nope, this is our extension. And I don't want to say it because, you know, everybody's got to do what they got to do and everybody's got to get music. But I mean, by the time it goes from a studio into one of the many um, organizations that sell i mean it's just been squashed and right and and there's no explanation of what it what it even is that you know we spent all this money to sound great and then it's squashed yeah and then the culture buys it and it's just about i mean my brain doesn't comprehend that but i'm i'm 51 years old so like i said i'm from a different generation and now i just hear everyone sort of using what is so efficient and what happens is the music ends up being so linear with no exploration um it's difficult so i think that's one beautiful thing that hit me as i was like what why how could i miss this album with all these dynamics and stuff and so you know knowing that it was like 2007 or whatever i was like okay okay you know there's 
there's different thought processes every year. You know, every yeah. decade, there's a new kind of way of all of us uh, entertaining art through these. I mean, look at us right now. We're on a computer. I never would have right. thought, you know, just talking to each other like it's real. And if we really use our heads, we could imagine you're across the table and we're really just right here. You know, and totally. that makes it, this is a crazy uh <laughs> I don't know. It could be the end, you know, <laughs> uh, but, it, but anyway, I really love everything you guys explored within that album. And uh, that's what I'm going to um, offer to everyone to check it out. Um, I want to put a link up on, on this interview when it comes up, not interview, but uh, this conversation and uh, yeah. try to try to get people to where, so what on that note, I that's know awesome. that I know that back when I was checking you guys out, I may have, accidentally put on a video that you did or something i don't know why claymation comes to mind or some sort of animation or something <laughs> i don't know but that's uh -huh. just my fog uh -huh. uh, but but i know like i said when i enjoy something really big um i, I don't want to know anything i've had i've had a couple songs ruined in my life yeah with the artist saying there's no girl <laughs> i'm like it's not there's no girl this song is not about anything and yeah there's no girl it's like okay i i will never listen to the song again mm -hmm. because there has to be a girl there's always been a girl you know in this particular song but there wasn't and that 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 was reality and i do similar things but i don't want to know reality you know yeah. so i'm not going to ask you what you know, um, won't come back alive is or what relief is or um, why. That's the other thing. I love the the, the order of the song. Like it's oh, just thanks, got this. Man. It's got this crescendo, and then with relief at the end, it's sort of like you got pummeled, and then you're relieved that it's going to end. But the end riff just goes. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, you're riding the wave, and you're like, kind of. It's kind of like a walk down on a an elliptical. You know, you got to you need to sort of work down from your 45 <laughs> minutes, you know? So I, uh -huh. I mean, it really took me on a whole ride like that. You That's know? rad, but, man. Uh, but... Just to finish my thought. Um, yeah. uh, lastly, um, I wanted to say this because I will forget. You said something I hadn't thought about. And now that you said it, uh, uh, it flips me out. So I come from a school of a lot of death metal, you know, thrash, all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, Paul Gray, um, one of my best friends, you know, yeah. obviously bass player, so not, we all know, uh, mm -hmm. he, you know, he, he and Joey and Mick, um, and the original singer of Slipknot, Andy Rowell, you know, these guys were heavy, heavy in the death metal. I mean, just, you know, I knew nothing about it because I, I went to a private school and, you know, you get busted just playing music out in the, the, the the parking lot, you know, Same you couldn't with me, wear man. Same with couldn't me. Wear yep. <laughs> so I, I'm an only child and I, I didn't okay. have a lot of older friends teaching me. Mm -hmm. um, but anytime someone did, I went down that road. So Paul Gray uh, was the gentleman who, who gave me, you know, Cannibal Corpse and, you know, Mick taught me, you know, showed me Morbid Angel and, you know, um, it was all those guys. It was Mick, Joey, Paul and Andy, a couple other cats that were around, they they played all that stuff, listened to all that stuff, but they also listened to Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, and like me, you know, or like, you know, Jane's Addiction or Rage yeah. or, um, you know, I'm an old school alternative guy, you know, yeah, uh, and punker, you know, so I, but they love that too. So that was a lot of our interest. But you said earlier, you said uh, you brought up Skinny Puppy and when you said that, I went to Too Dark Park in my mind. And then I was like, whoa, you know, so what I'm saying is I, I mm -hmm. get a similar feeling listening. And I'm wondering if that's one of my biggest attractions, because I, uh. I love Skinny Puppy. And I used to purposely when my parents would leave town, I'd get a 12 pack of beer and lock the house and crank Skinny Puppy up in the dark. And I would just be like in the window, like, hello, <laughs> <laughs> freak out. Awesome. And, and I love it. But so I, I feel, I don't want to say your influence or whatever, but I see some of those, no. those colors after you said it. I had never 
thought about that band and I, I just feel some color, you know, just some yeah. inspiration. Sure. So that's cool. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. Did you guys, uh, do you guys, what do you listen to? Do you listen to everything? Um, I see, are you at home right now? Yeah, I'm at home. Yeah. So you got your guitars, you got, you know, what do you, what do you, what, what do you do? You go to school, you do. You no, work? I'm not in school anymore. Um, actually, so I've got a whole like a different out of music career now. After, after we put out the, board up the house album and toured on it for a couple of years. Uh, when we stopped, I went back to school, I actually went to law school. And so now I'm a lawyer. That's my, uh, that's my day job. Yeah. Great um, job, man. Yeah. Good for yeah. You. And I love it. Um, I love it, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's the kind of profession that to, you know, to really learn, to really excel and to really build your skills. It's just a big, you know, it's a real commitment. You got to really commit to it. And that's, uh, I said, still committed to it, but especially in that first part of your career in the school and the first five or six years after, you really got to grind pretty hard. And so um, doing that, focusing on that, um, the whole time I missed making music, but I didn't have much time for it. And when I did have time, I didn't have any energy for those because I was just zapped, you know? Um, but I'm finally at a, a place in my life now where I've got sort of more, more bandwidth you know, whatever mental bandwidth to, to, to return to making music. And now that I'm doing it again, it's, uh, you know, it feels incredible. It was always something that I missed. So it may have been 13 years between these two albums, but it won't be, you know, it won't be 13 more uh, <laughs> before the next one. But no, I think that's I, amazing. Just, a lawyer. Thanks, dude. That's, Thank you. I, I, yeah. I actually tell people a lot that they're the winners in our business because, <laughs> you know, I'm out, I'm out getting carpal tunnel and, you know, I'm going to be in a wheelchair when it's all over for being in Slipknot. And I've been to labels and I've been to booking agents and I've been, you know, to promoters and I've met everyone and those lawyers, you know, they're behind the scenes and they're the ones I'm listening to. So it's a great, my best friend graduated from Georgetown and I've, oh, cool. uh, I've always just, I mean, that's, it's fascinating, you know, law. So that's, do uh, what what field of law are you in are you going to be able to do help your band uh the field well as far as the field i'd say the two i do all litigation and the two okay the so two, you're a litigator yeah litigator so you know I, mostly civil litigation like complex civil lit comp you know whether that means um you know, business disputes or intellectual property disputes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But also on the more on the side um, here in Michigan, I do some uh, appeals to criminal defense appeals. So I represent uh, criminal defendants who have, uh, who, you know, can't pay for their own counsel and they need to appeal, whether it's appealing their conviction because they, because they want to, you know, argue that they were unfairly convicted or appeal their sentence. Uh, for saying they have an unjust or unlawful sentence. Uh, that's the sort of stuff I work on. That's a little more on the side. That's about 10% of what I do. But uh, yeah, so it's, so, you know, working with people in that respect. And then this, the civil litigation is um, more sort of the, the big, the big complex lawsuits. Yeah. Hmm. But it's all, it's really interesting. It's super interesting stuff. It's just, uh, you know, but it can, takes a lot of energy out of me too. And so, uh, so that's, again, you know, finding so it's been interesting like finding time between the, the career stuff and then still making time for my my you know my passion which is making music with my friend michael uh it's it's like uh you know my favorite thing to do in life and so finding finding time to do both is it's been a challenge but i'm like i finally finally reached that point where i've got a balance and it's it's really awesome so do you guys do you guys have like a website and stuff i mean are you planning on touring uh, at all this new album yeah we're, we're uh we don't have we don't have specific plans yet we would love to we'd love to be able to make some shows happen um even if it's just a handful a year in, in bigger cities uh we'd love to be able to do it um you know we've been again we you know we kind of went off the grid for so long and we're never a, a super well-established band in the first place that we had no idea how our return would be perceived or if anyone would even care and uh, to our you know it's been awesome we're super super proud of our new album and uh, the reception has been really positive and people are excited about it and it just makes us 
more excited at the the prospect of playing shows if we can make it happen. Um, but you know, we're we're spread out between two countries. Other members have other bands and projects, and everyone has jobs and families, and you know how it is. You know, do, touring with a family. It's uh, uh, so you know that's those are those are things that we're working through. And uh, but but as far as whether we want to do it, it's definitely something we want to try to make happen. Did you guys, when you toured back in the day, did you go to Europe at all? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, we did Europe a handful of times, mostly clubs, but did a couple of festivals. Actually, just one festival. And the U, we did a ton of U.S. tours. Played, played Coachella once. That was kind of our biggest show here. We went to Australia once, Brazil. So we we got in a fair amount of touring in the mid late two thousands. Um, but it was usually headlining shows, some support tours. Um, but then uh, then you know right when we started winding down and went on hiatus. We promised ourselves and each other, we're like, all right, no matter how many, you know, no matter how good the offers are, we have to say no, because we're taking a break. And, you know, that's of course when things felt like they were really gonna start to pick up. So the sort of this alternate universe reality where we had continued being a full-time band, who knows what would have happened or what kind of music we would have made. But uh, it feels like we had to do this to go on this hiatus for a long time to be able to preserve what we have uh, and, and to keep it going, so. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I yeah. think early on in my career, I can remember when we did the self-titled album, I literally panicked because I thought I was never going to go home. And yeah. I, had, I had three children and had been married several, several years before uh, getting the band signed, you know? And uh, I can just remember we were blowing up, I guess, yeah. <laughs> something like that. And uh, I remember those days. <laughs> I, I, I just remember almost being in tears asking yeah. you know, our manager at the time, like, am I, am I going to go home or are we just riding out this thing? Yeah. And, and the reason why I asked was I was burned out. You know, I mean, it's Slipknot. So it's not like, I mean, we were, we were pretty burnt out and those, those are the burn days. Those are the real shows of like, you know, we have no money. We didn't ever think we were going to make it. We didn't know if it was going to last a day or two days. So yeah. it was all out, you know, it was all out just constantly. And I just was like, all right, people are just going to ride this shit out and we're never going to go home and I'm just going to fizzle out and that's going to be it. I'm not going to have enough strength. And then <clears throat> I can remember getting home and already some cats in the band were just stressed and out of their minds about continually to go. But what I learned over time after Iowa is when, you know, a couple of the guys start doing their thing on the side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I learned right away that I love the break because it takes me a good year to physically heal. I mean, every tissue in the body, the bones, I mean, physicals, surgeries, whatever, a good year just to wow. phys physically feel better. There's a lot of us, there's a lot going on. We choose to be physical, so we pay the price. Yeah. But then the next year, it takes six more months for me to like open my brain to reality. Like what, what's going on down the street? What's on, what's on TV? What, yeah. Who's rolling through bars? Like what, you know, what's going on? And then about a year and a half, I start getting bored. And that's when my mind goes into hyper uh, sensitive art mode and I really start downloading everything. And then hopefully somewhere after a year and a half, we're starting to prepare to get back together. So I've, I've, I always encourage any band who's getting into this racket to, to always remember to take time for themselves and family because you know I can remember being on the road and just getting a call that my dad died, you know? And oh, you know, things like that, you know, you just stop dead in your tracks. And you're like, damn, you know, like, when was the last time I was home? When was the last time I had a great conversation? And <clears throat> everything's the road, the road, the road. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's great. You know, I don't know about 12 years for Slipknot anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, you, <clears throat> but you have back, no reason to do that. No reason to you, do that. You got a yeah. law degree and uh, maybe start a family, like you're saying, or, you know, you guys, it's not like you just stopped 
living life and uh, just did whatever. I mean, sounds like you guys all, you know, did some moves and did what you had to and, you know, you're back. That's all that matters. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what you guys do. So thanks, man. Yeah, it's um, I appreciate that. It's um, yeah, we'll see about I mean, with the with the shows, too. It's like in theory, could we find five days or, you know, a week or two weeks and we could technically do something? Yes. But what about to take the time to put together the show that we think the music really deserves the really good really proper production a really good stage show um so it's a matter of like seeing if seeing if just the opportunities and the availability can can come along to make that really happen but but whether it's shows or not you know more more music for sure because it's it's my favorite thing to do and and uh you know we have more we feel like we've got more to say and uh it's uh yeah it's exciting well also you know, I, I speak about this a lot with our culture too, is that, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, your fans, your culture are experiencing emotion with you through a phone, a computer. But, you know, myself growing up, it was always in a car. I mean, that's where we learned to try and sing. That's where we air drum. That's where we like, head bang to to school you know you know i'd yeah. always listen to like black flag or big black before i'd go to school and big black hell yeah yeah that's that's probably one of my more that's in my like top five best favorite bands in the world oh uh, you know I'm, i'll i gotta interrupt you just to say the only song we've ever covered by any band was uh is a uh, bad penny by big black we did that on the bbc once i'll i'll find a link and send it to you that would be amazing and i'll, I'll yeah. tell you a similar thing with me i went to college and i had a friend and i'd go to his dorm room and he roomed with this guy who is just out just gone and mm -hmm. and and he stunk and he had he just was out and I was pretty fascinated uh -huh. with him, you know? So I'd always strike up conversations and he handed me uh, the, um, I, I may confuse this again, I'm not very good at this stuff, but it was a red album with an X on it. I want to say they called it Racer X, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was just X or whatever, but it had kerosene on it, I think. And it was vinyl and he was holding it like this. And he's like, you need this and he gave it to me. And, and I, again, I'm not sure what album it was. It just, yeah. in my brain, it was red. And I thought there was an X. I know there's a band, Racer X, and, you know, this uh -huh. stuff. But anyway, uh, once I heard Kerosene, and I know that's probably everybody's, you know, like, if they had a single, that'd probably be, that'd it. be it. But yeah. but when I heard Kerosene, I'm like, you know, find something to do. You know, if there's Kerosene around, yeah, set me on fire. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just like. That's me, you know, that, that's how I think. And um, lived here my whole life. Yep. Yeah, lived here my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Just, and then, uh, did you ever see, did you ever see Pig Pile, the video Pig Pile? No, I Big didn't. Black? Again, pretty sure right. it's called, I think yeah, it's yeah, called that's, Pig Pile. I think that's right. That sounds right. Check it out because it's All like, right. so it's good because you can see, you know, what they're doing, you know, so they got the drum machine, but two things, one, they take leather uh, straps and put them around their waist. Did you ever catch that? I seen a picture of it, but I didn't know what that was about. So it's just some big. I, I don't know what it's about either. But that <laughs> was one of my that was one of my things because Albini would you know walk forward and uh, you know and, and the, the other guitar player would walk forward, but they'd have these straps wrapped twice around and hold the guitar on like that. And I just thought that was so wow. mili military and and yeah. different you know it was like and then if you watch the video something's going on um you know and back in the day they you know they'd play in the dark and lock the doors and that's the only way you could get in and uh the one album eight tracks uh eight track track for fucking or whatever it was songs about fucking songs about fucking i think yeah no not that one one of them i know they used to send out demos or albums with fish hooks and shit you know this is all just weird stuff when i own my bar but and again i who knows uh all small memories but anyway back to that video um steve is like 
it's got to be a small cut on his hand or a big, I don't know what's going uh-huh. on, but he's wearing a white shirt. And then, you know, after the song one, there's like a few little splatters. Mm-hmm. By the end of the show, this white t-shirt has all this blood on it. Gnarly. Uh-huh. And, you know, it could, it could be just a little thumbnail thing that he picked, or it could be something big. I don't know. But when I was younger, watching that, the mindset and the focus, again, you know, serious music you know but that's big black's probably one of my probably one of my favorite colors and reality of music because it really takes me to a place you can't get anywhere else but through them you know through his mind nothing sounds like that nothing and yeah it's almost dangerous for me actually you know bad penny all this stuff is all yeah what what a mindset and i hear and again just to bring it full circle again you know hearing your album just from the first track and the way the drums are coming in as these like squeezes you know these Mm -hmm. these things squeezing and i'm like holy shit you know this is another big black sort of feeling for me you know and you don't you don't you don't get it that often so i i again i really appreciate it that you did the the drum machine and and put so much love behind it and made it this like very brutal terminator kind of thing but anyway (laughs) awesome uh, that's a huge compliment man thank you Uh, you know we uh we we put a one thing i can say about that album and about and about the new one is you know whatever you want to say about the details sort of an overarching goal was for us to to do something that that we that we really love when we can find it in music is to try to create a real world to get kind of lost Mm -hmm. in um, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, a lot of layers, a lot of textures, and uh, that's, that's my favorite, some of my favorite thing to, to find in listening to music, and that's just what we, you know, that's what we try to do, and so I, to hear, to hear you, you know, coming across it organically, and having that sort of reaction, and as someone who's heard plenty of music in your life, uh, I really appreciate that. It means a lot, so thank you. Well, I thank you for, uh, the music, you know, I just, uh, I think it's very important, you know, music. I, I, every day I thank whatever circumstance uh, got into this reality. More and more, I'm believing it's assimilation. I'm, I'm, a, I'm really getting to the point of paranoia of yeah. all this. Actually, I'm like, who's to, who's to say that the flesh isn't the real 3D mesh? You know, like. Who's to say, like, what is really, I mean, it's getting fascinating, but if I didn't have God music, yeah. I tell, I tell my friends out on the road and, you know, uh, fans of all ages, our culture, I, I've always felt like we're not a band anymore. We really just have this beautiful family <clears throat> that shares with us. But I say to them, you know, like music's the only thing I've had that's always been there for me. I mean, I've been married 27 years, going on 28 next month. And of course, that's my best friend and the love of my life and my children. Um, but, you know, even they are they. And, and you know, they might need to be there for themselves and not be there for me. And I wouldn't expect anything less. You know, that's fine. But music, I don't even need it to play to have it, you know, and to get through things. And I have a very strong imagination. So I can really disappear on songs and, and really just, um digest them and i really love like i was saying you know 99.9 percent of everyone's checking out your album in the olden days it would have been a tape or a cd yeah. uh connected to a a tuner of some sort and you just you know i used to take rides um you know i think every time tool came out with an album i'd grab it at some place wait in line same and i i put it in the car <laughs> Uh-huh. I'd take off for a couple hours Yeah, because, you know, there used to be no phones and yep. nobody, nobody bothering you. So I'd be like, oh, if I go back home, my dad's going to make me mow the lawn or I'm going to have to do dishes or take the dogs out. So I'll just drive around for the next couple hours and download this album. Windows down, you know, just driving, soaking in the earth's, you know, realities and twisting them with the imagination of the music that you're downloading in your brain that's getting you to feel good about going to work 
or pick up the girlfriend or yeah. get home and mow the fucking lawn, you know, whatever. But uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I really appreciate, um, <clears throat> I spent a lot of time just by myself with music, you know? So yeah, anyway, man, um, you, man, pleasure to meet you. If there's anything I can do ever, that'd be great. I'm sure we will definitely see each other out there. Dude, I'd that'd be more. great. I, I hope yeah. so. I hope so. Yeah. And I've, you know, I, you probably get, I'm sure you get this all the time because you're in Slipknot, but I have to tell you, um, when I was 15 years old, I saw you guys twice on what I think was your first U.S. tour. Um, I think I was Ozfest '99. Yeah, saw that, and then, it was and then with, with and then, and then I chamber. Cold Chamber and Machine Head. I saw that yep, at the, ma yep. the, ma the Masquerade in Atlanta. And uh, oh my God! Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so check this out. Just real uh -huh. quick. No, you first. Go ahead. Continue. No, Continue. I just yeah yeah. Well, just to say that you know that was that was around the time you know 15. I'm trying to think. You know, those are very important years for ingesting music and forming, you know, your sort of artistic loves. And, uh, and you know, that was, you guys came around for me at just like, just the right time. It was just a couple of years before, you know, Rage Against the Machine, Nine Inch Nails, get me a bit heavier. And uh, I remember, yeah, my first Ozfest. And I remember hearing about you guys before, before the self-titled, but when you had the previous, I'm sorry, I forgot the Murder Make Feed, feed, Make feed Kill Repeat. repeat. I yep. had that I had that CD and I remember going, being on some online forum, you know, again, the beginning of the sort of music internet, reading about this crazy band from Iowa and they played a show and they destroyed a $9,000 espresso machine or something like that. And I heard all this, all just like what the, I was there when that hype was beginning. And I remember being 15 and, and standing by the stage watching you play that uh, Ozfest in Atlanta. And it was, it definitely left a mark. Uh, and so that was, uh, so it's really, you know, you were, you were very much a part of my uh, initial introduction into the, the, the sort of darker side of heavy music. And I got, I got darker and I got into, you know, sort of that whole spiral. Uh, you, were, you were a big part of it. And it's, so it's very cool and surreal for me to, you know, over 20 years later, be meeting you now and, and to hear that you enjoyed something that, uh, that I was part of. So I just well, want to say that that's are. cool. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. I feel, I feel very connected. Um, I like getting older. I, I feel more at peace being who I am these days. I, I just, I love becoming older and I don't know how to say it, but it's like, I don't think like, I would never say like, I hear Slipknot in your music. But when I when I listen to music, you know, I, I do imagine like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, it's I guess what I'm saying is as I get older, I love finding stuff like people would have found me. Like what you're saying right now. You're saying yeah. you were younger and I was doing it and you're like, you know, you're there going, okay, this, but see, then I get older and I'm wearing down and then I get to find things. And it's like it's all relevant, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just all very it's all very at peace with each other. Uh, yeah. Atlanta, uh, the Masquerade, the Infinite mm -hmm. Sea Snakes. Do you remember that band, the Infinite Sea Snakes? I 100% remember the name, and I but I don't remember. They, Were they did they open that show? Um, I don't think so. There's a okay. chance they could have. I the bar that I bought that we got signed out of, I had them play my bar, and you know they all get nude and shit, and we did this. Uh, we did this. Uh, so I told them they couldn't do the real show because you know I had a little liquor license and mm -hmm. they loved to shut me down. So what we did <laughs> was we staged a fake arrest. So we had cops, real cops come in and act like they were shutting the show down because of nudity. And we just kept playing and people flipped out, split, took off. And, and they're like, okay, we're gonna bring in a SWAT team and everyone bought it and they were taken off. We just- Oh, kept that's playing. awesome. <laughs> and then they, they never uh -huh. came. And, and I wanna say that the Impotent Sea Snakes were a little upset because some people actually bolted and, and they missed some crowd. But uh, uh -huh. anyway, it flipped the other way. We finally got to go. And I wanna say a couple of the members of the Impotent Sea Snakes had a lot to do with the masquerade, may have been partners or worked there, I'm not sure. 
Um, but it was cool to like go see their hood then. I, I, I remember the show very well. I remember it very, 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 very well um, in my brain. I, I remember that because we haven't played there too many times. And I remember it was a beautiful area. I walked up the street and down and I just, I really dug it. So, awesome. so that's cool, man. It's all connected, man. It's yeah, it is. It really you know? is all connected. It's kind of mind, <laughs> it, it's mind blowing. Um, it is. So. It, and, it, and everything's supposed to happen. Uh, one thing I could tell you is I believe everything happens for a reason. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's a reason we're here together and there's a reason I didn't hear it for 12 years and, you know, yeah. or, you know, for 10 years and stuff. So that, that's the, that's the best part about what I do is just getting it when I get it. So anyway, it's great talking to you, you know, yeah, likewise, you man. forever. I just, I try to keep it, you know, I try not to keep anybody too much or too little or whatever, but man, yeah, man. So, I'd like to maybe, uh, you know, say hi to the other, the other cats and maybe sometime in the future we could uh, get together and maybe do a band thing, or I could talk to some other guys too, or do an all thing, but I, I'm sure Dude, hopefully, great. hopefully it sounds like you're going to make some attempts to get some shows together and stuff. So I'll, I'll keep an eye and we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch. And yeah, um, man, that sounds great. <clears throat> I hope I look forward to meeting you someday. Uh, hope, I'm yeah, sure it'll happen eventually. And uh, happen. I'll, I'll put, um, I'll, I'm going to mail you, I'll mail you a copy of the record you dig and the new one as well. And uh, That'd be awesome, I, man. I can't, I can't tell you, I won't try to tell you if you're going to like it or not, but it does. You mentioned that last track relief. And I'd say it definitely picks up where that left off, and it's more of a meditative, hypnotic vibe for the for the whole album. So it's, well, relief is. I mean, I love won't come back alive because there's just this sort of self destructiveness in that that I mm -hmm. that I that I need in life. I need mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But <clears throat> pardon me, if you knew me and were around me, like um, I. I I play similar to that main riff that, that I, I, if I had to play that, I would try to attempt it with my thumb, no pick, you know, I would, I would uh -huh. pull off. So I like that sort of, and that's, that's my jam, man. That's what I want everybody to listen. I mean, everybody's got to do yeah. what they got to do. Start at the beginning or the, whatever. I usually go all over. It's all good. And yeah. Then man. I start in the beginning and then I roll, you know, but that song and then because of what it is, the way it plays out and the way the singers, the way it just keeps going. It's so refreshing. So um, that's good to hear that maybe it picks off where I'll, I'll take that to mind yeah, when I'm listening a, to it. It's a different vibe. The new one's not as punishing. It's like more of a, more of a meditative record. Okay. Uh, but well, that's, so it's a bit that, different. It's different. It's cool to think about though. Maybe you get punished and then maybe you take the deep breath after it. You know, maybe I listen to, uh, you know, I'll have to get it all and, and work my way. But I, I purposely didn't listen to it yet uh, yeah, when cool. I knew we were going to talk uh, because uh, I knew we talked and then I figure I'd listen to it after we speak. So I'll wait oh, until good, it man. comes or whatever, and then I'll I'll jump in. And um, hey, when it, when the time is right, the right time may not be for five more years for you to listen to it. Well, <laughs> no, no, <Nah>, okay, I'll, <laughs> no, I'll get I'll get on it. I'll get on it. But uh, anyway, man, keep up keep up what you do it's it's exciting um you know I, i'm sure the people the fans that you speak of that um that you said have been there i'm sure they're very i'm sure it's a breath of fresh air that all of a sudden out of nowhere boom something that they love just comes right back out so that's a really cool story and that's a cool thing to continue and to have a law degree with it is fascinating so keep up all the good <laughs> Thanks, work and help all those guys who need appeals if they deserve it and and, uh, you know, just keep up the good work and we'll talk soon. And thanks for all you do. And I'm sure we'll, we'll see each other soon. All right, man. Thanks, dude. Great talking to you. Nice meeting you. Great talking to you, man. Be good and be safe out there. All right. You too. Take care, all right, man. See you. Bye.